If you have your Bible today, or maybe when you're watching me, it's tonight. Hey, it may be tomorrow. People watch at all different times because they have different schedules. But whenever you're watching, today, tonight, tomorrow, praise God, Jesus is the same. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and glory to God forever. And we're focusing on the everlasting, hashtag everlasting. We're focusing on the eternal, hashtag eternal. We want to go to heaven, and we want to miss hell. Take your Bible today and open with me to Revelation chapter 13, and I'm going to be continuing the message that I began a week or so ago, we preached part one. Now today we're going to preach part two, continuing the series, The Antichrist, Beast, False Prophet. The Antichrist, Beast, False Prophet. And as I told you a week ago, even though the title of the series is about Antichrist, Beast, False Prophet, we are really preaching only one message. We are preaching the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because if you read the end of the book, in Revelation 19, 20, 21, and 22, we win. Jesus defeats the Antichrist. At the end of World War III, the Battle of Armageddon, Jesus Christ physically, personally, and in flesh returns to this world and puts his feet on the Mount of Olives. Glory to God. And the dead in Christ are risen from the dead. And we which are alive are caught up together to meet them in the air, to meet them in the clouds, to be with Jesus, and to set up a thousand-year kingdom, a millennial reign on this planet. Hallelujah. The answer for earth is not green energy. The answer for this earth is the red blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Global warming is God's two-minute warning. Jesus Christ is coming back. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. And that's what the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ is all about. But the Bible says that we are to not be ignorant of the devil's devices. That's, I believe, 2 Corinthians 2, and I think it's verse 11. Check me on that. Do not be ignorant of of the devil's devices. Paul says in Ephesians 6, beginning in verse 10, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we have a war, we have a battle, and what is our enemy? What is the organization and the hierarchy of the enemy forces? He says, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. In another place, Paul said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. They're not carnal. But they're mighty through God. Hallelujah. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations. We don't need to imagine and create an image and use our imagination. No, we are to cast down imaginations. We don't need the internet. We need intercession. We don't need infrastructure, billions of dollars. We need intercession. We need to take hold of the hearts of the altar. We need to pray through. We need some old-fashioned prayer meetings, some old-fashioned altar services. We need to rend our hearts before Almighty God. Revelation 13 and verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns. Now I want you to notice the next phrase. Like. Like. We talked today on social media about liking someone. I liked that video. I liked him. I friend him or her. I follow her. I'm a fan. I like them. And we talk to them about our likenesses and we send images and pics and videos that are our likenesses and we like ourselves and we like what we see and we love the world. Notice it says he will be like a lamb, a likeness, which is all likenesses are prohibited in the book of Exodus. If you go back to Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 6, God prohibits and God forbids them all. Father knows best. Father has his reasons. Notice it says like a lamb. It doesn't say he is a lamb or he will be a lamb, 
But he, the Antichrist, being false prophet, will be like a lamb. He will appear to be a lamb. It will be a masquerade. It will be a charade. A, a charade. It, he will be like a lamb and speak as a dragon, as the devil, as Satan. So he will appear to be as Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. He will appear nominally to be a Christian, a born-again, evangelical, fundamentalist, even charismatic, Pentecostal Christian. Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse, he said many false prophets will come in the name of Buddha, in the name of Mohammed. No, that's not what he said in the name of Matre, in the name of the Pope. No. In the name of Hare Krishna, no, that's not what Jesus said. In the name of the Dalai Lama, no. In the name of Joseph Smith, no. That's not what he said. In the name of the Watchtower Society, that's not what he said. You know what Jesus said? He said, many false prophets and false teachers showing great signs, wonders, and miracles will come in my name, in my name, in my name. But he said, they're false. They're fake. They're foolish. They're frauds. But they come in the name of Jesus. And this corresponds with Matthew 7, 21 to 23, where Jesus says in that day, many, notice many, the multitudes on the broad way to hell, the many, the millions, the billions, many will come in my name, casting out devils, doing miracles, prophesying, doing this and that. But, but, but despite all their works and all their effort and all their flesh and all the religion of big religion and all the denominationalizing of the big denominations and institutions and organizations of the evil empire of organized religion, which leads to one place, a very organized hell, Jesus said to them, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And that is what 1 John teaches is the spirit of the Antichrist. The, 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 the book, the Johannine Epistles, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, say there are many Antichrists in the world. They are the spirit of Antichrist. But the big Antichrist, the beast, 666, he's coming. But he will come cloaked as a Christian. And he will deceive. Jesus said, even the very elect. Think about that. Were it possible. Let me read the text again before we pray and get started. I beheld another beast. And the only answer for the beast is the blood of the Lamb and the Bible and the broken body of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's how you defeat Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a good three-point sermon for you preacher boys out there. You have permission to steal that one and run it and take it. The way you defeat the beast is by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, by the, by the Bible, and by the broken body of Jesus Christ. I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He comes from the people, from the people. He's a man of the people. He's a populist. He's a man of the people. And he had two horns, like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Let's pray as we get started today. Father, thank you so much for another opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk and speak to the whole wide world. God, I pray you anoint me, and I feel your anointing right now. Make my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. Anoint me as you've never anointed me before. And anoint everyone who hears these words. Hallelujah. How to fall on their face. Confess and repent of their sins. And make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. God, we pray this in Jesus' name, giving you all the praise and the glory and the honor for everything said, done, and wrought and accomplished in this service. I pray, oh God, that you bring hearts and minds and ears to hear this word. I pray, oh God, that you draw them in from the north. From the south, from the east, and the west. I pray, oh God, that every nation, tongue, tribe, language, and people would hear the word of Almighty God. And that this word would not return void, but that it would accomplish what you will it to do. Oh God, right now I ask that you send the rain, send the rain, send the rain on every nation, kindred, tongue, tribe, language, and people. Send the laborers, Lord God, to the north, to the south, to the east east and the west and draw them in because you said if I be lifted up 
on the cross. I will draw all men to me. And Lord, I'm asking you to draw them in. Draw the multitudes and the masses to the bleeding side of Calvary. And I'll ask it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. You'll notice in my text it said he's like a lamb. And he spoke as a dragon. The title of the message is Antichrist, Beast, False Prophet. We see in there an evil masquerade, an evil charade. We see an evil trinity. Antichrist, Beast, False Prophet. The Antichrist is the physical person who will rule. The beast is the demon spirit, fallen angel that will possess him. And the false prophet is the apostate church and its leaders who enable him to rise to power, the whore who rides the beast, as we read about in the 18th chapter. It is a evil trinity, and they will imitate and be like Jesus, hence the phrase, like a lamb. The three words, antichrist, beast, false prophets, are what I call a synonym. But instead of spelling it S. Y-N, I spell it S-I-N, a sin on him. I want you to think back as we begin today to the time just before the great flood, the days of Noah. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. The world was full of violence. We'll look at 2021. More violence than we can even conceive of or comprehend. The, 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 the Bible says that every thought of the mind, of the imagination of man, was only evil continually before the flood. Well, look at 2021. I read in the paper this morning that now that the vaccines have come, that people are going to get waxed and vaxxed, and the party's going to go on, and they're going to hook up in the dating sites, and they're going to go crazy, and they're going to fornicate, and alcohol sales are going through the roof. Be warned, America, did you learn nothing? Di carabus did you learn nothing from coronavirus? I speak as a prophet of God. Did you learn nothing from COVID? You ain't seen nothing yet. The second, the second great plague, Revelation 15, 1 and 2, shall be worse unless you repent of your evil deeds, America. And I speak as a prophet of God to America today, calling this nation to repentance. And you'd think the other preachers would get behind me and back me and say, Amen, Brother Mike. But you know what they do? They block me. They, they lampoon me. They ridicule me. They criticize me. They laugh at me. They mock me. They scoff at me. They defrock me. They blacklist me. They blackball me. But look, you're not going to stop me. You got to me too late. I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm going to preach this gospel till there's no breath left in my lungs. I'm going to preach this Bible and thump my Bible. You can pry this Bible out of my cold, dead Bible thumping hands. Hallelujah to God. Days of Noah. Before the deluge, there was delusion. Now write that down. Rewind the tape. Doop. Delusion, deceiving, deception, precedes deluge. Now the only difference today, back then it was a great flood. 2 Peter chapter 3 and other places, it's going to be a fire. Amen. It's going to be a fire. It's going to be a fire. It's going to be a fire. The Bible says that, that, that our day in the last days, it's, it's a departure of the faith. It's an apostasy characterized by seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And that's what's being preached over TV. That's what's being preached on internet sites and on apps. Doctrines of demons. Our, our big mega churches and media churches and the electronic churches, nothing more than doctrines of demons. Doctrines of devils. Doctrines of evil spirits. Winds of doctrine come carrying away the people like Ephesians chapter 4 says. Blowing out our candle to where it is written, Ichabod, Ichabod, the glory is gone. We are in a new spiritual dark age. We are at the bottom, and so there must be a new church born, a new work born, the new reformation of Christianity beginning here in First Americans. And that is what I preach, the new reformation of Christianity. These, this evil trinity, 
Antichrist, beast, false prophet will be seen of men, seen by men, as being Christ or as being of Christ. A talking about a fire that's going to come. You know, a big fire, and that's, that's what's burning. That's what hell is. Hell, fire, and brimstone. I'm the last one that preaches it. I'm the last American hellfire and brimstone preacher. I'm the last American Protestant. But yeah, I do tell the truth to the Pope. I do tell the truth to the Vatican. I tell the truth to the Taj Mahal. I tell the truth to Mecca. I tell the truth to Salt Lake City. I tell the truth to the Watchtower Society. There is only one way, and his name is Jesus Christ. He's still the only answer. A big fire has lots of smoke. Lots of smoke. And all of your screens, large screens and small screens, are smoke screens. Smoke screens of raging hellfire. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And these fires are set on fire from hell. I want to read you a quick scripture, and, and we're going to... As we move on, we're going to emphasize and we're going to read more scripture. You don't want to hear my opinions. You don't want to hear my views, my ideas, my thoughts. You want to hear strictly what does the word of God say. Amen. And if what I say doesn't line up exactly with the word of God, then you need to defriend me, defollow me, and get away from me. Amen. James chapter 3 the fifth and the sixth verses. No, no preacher preaches on this. I haven't heard this preached on 30 years. But, but you know, it's still in the Bible. You're not the editor-in-chief of the Bible. Neither is your pastor. It's all the Word of God. James 3, 5. And you know, as I look at James, the Southern Baptist Convention's meeting right now, and they're fighting, they're bickering. Wars, divisions, lusts, political power, struggle. None of that's of God. They, they need to forget about electing a new president of the Southern Baptist Convention and they need to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. Same for the Assemblies of God. Same for every institution, organization, and denomination. All that politics, all that bickering. It's just the flesh. It's just works. It's just big religion. Big religion leads to one place, a big hell. Big religion leads to one place, a big hell. Now, same book of James. Chapter 3 and verse 5. Even so, the tongue... I read Southern Baptists saying this about another Southern Baptist and this about another Southern Baptist and this about another Southern Baptist. And the tongue, the tongue, the tongue, the tongue is a little member. She got your tongue. It's a little member. But it boasts. And that's one of the big things that the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to be a boaster. But believe it or not, you better listen to me. If you're boasting, you're going to be roasting. If you're boasting, you're going to be toast in hell forever. It boasts great things. That's what the internet is. That's what social media is. That's what sites and apps are. It's boasting of the flesh. And it's all of the devil. It's the devil's devices. The devil's devices electronically are vices. It boasts great things. I'm great. Look at me. Look how pretty I am. Look how pretty my wife is. Look how hot my girlfriend is. Look how hot I am. Look like me. But friend of mine, listen, it's hot in hell. It's hot in hell. And oh, look how cool I am, friend. It's not cool in hell. There's no air conditioner in hell. There's no 9-11 system in hell. There's no help desk in hell. Behold how great a matter of a little fire it kindles. And now look at verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body, and it sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. It is set on fire of hell. Paul talked constantly about evil, wicked, filthy, dirty communication. Read your New Testament. Somebody says, well, the Internet, social media, sites and apps... That's not in the Bible. Yeah, it is. Every time talk, Paul talks about gossip or rumors or hearsay, any time Paul talks about tattletales, any time Paul talks about filthy communication, evil communication, corrupt communications, every time he's talking about the Internet, he's talking about television, he's talking about the movies, social media, sites and apps. Wake up. Quit saying you're woke politically and wake up spiritually. God, give us a new 
great awakening in Jesus name the electronic tongue is the tongue of the digital age and the electronic tongue along with taking pictures or pics along with social media along with the moving in motion pictures all of this is satanic television is not only a boob tube television is the devil box you need truth not television television is temptation you need to turn off the television and start turning the pages of your bible youtube 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 is the boob tube of hell the only thing you ought to watch on YouTube is my sermons and the sermons of other preachers who are anointed by God calling America to repentance. Look, 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 listen to me. If you've ever listened to a preacher before, your cute little baby videos won't save anybody. Your dog videos, cat videos, animal videos is not going to save anybody. Your, your avatars and your animation and your lip syncing and your hip-hopping and your twerking, listen to me, and your cursing and your f word and your in words is not going to save anybody. The only thing that will save anybody is the word of Almighty God, the cross of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, preached without favor. Compromise. That's pretty good preaching right there. If you can't say amen to that, then your amen is broken. Amen. <laughs> this is why I want you to, some of y'all, I can sense the skepticism. Some of y'all don't believe what I'm saying. Open your Bible to 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 3. Like I said, we're going to slow down. And we're going to go straight to the Word of God. Because some of y'all are thinking, hmm, you know, that guy preaches pretty good. But I'm not so sure that I buy everything he's preaching. Well, it's not... Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm preaching, it's what does the Bible say? Hey, believe me, this is not what I want to preach. I'd like to be a mega church pastor. I'd like to have millions of followers. I'd like to have everybody say, oh, I love that brother Mike. That, that evangelist Mike Dial on Twitter and YouTube, man, he's my favorite preacher. That evangelist M. Dial on Twitter, man, he's my favorite preacher. I'd love to fill arenas and stadiums like Billy Graham used to and Jimmy Swagger used to. But the bottom line is I have to preach the gospel, not a gospel that attracts people, masses, and multitudes and, and pleases men. I have to be a God pleaser, not a man pleaser. And with that in mind, look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, speaks expressly in the latter times. That's where we are, the last days of the end times. In the latter times, there shall be a great revival and, and millions shall flock to God. No. Sadly and unfortunately, tragically, that's not what Paul said. We wish, and if you listen to the other prophets and the false prophets and the pillar prophets and the prophets for profit... They would have you believe in the word of faith and the prosperity message, in the purpose-driven life, in the psychology gospel, in the politics gospel. That, that's what's happening. And that's what the Bible predicted. But, but exactly it says just the opposite. It says, some shall depart from the faith. Apostasy. There will not be an apostolic church. There will be an apostate church. This is what Laodicea is. So they say, oh, I'm rich and I have goods. I'm rich and increased with goods. I have need of nothing. That's what, that's what Laodicea said. They're first Americans. But you know what Jesus said? No, you're poor, wretched, dumb, blind, miserable, and lost. We boast, we confess, we profess all these things, but you can confess it and boast it and, and profess it and confess it all day long. And it doesn't make it true if your life is full of sin, greed, covetousness, and that's what the prosperity gospel is. I'm sorry to say it. 
And that's why all these preachers are blocking me on Twitter. They're blocking me on Twitter. John Hagee blocked me. Greg Laurie. These are just the new. I can, I can recite dozens of them that have already done it. They're because they don't want to hear a preacher truly calling America and the first American church to repentance. They don't want to hear it. And when you come against people's sin, it makes them angry. It makes them angry. When you come against the den of thieves, it makes them angry. It makes them angry. But I don't care. Get mad at me all you want. Because my responsibility is to be a watchman standing on the wall declaring unto Israel her sin. God said, will you judge them, O son of man? Will you declare unto Israel her sins? That's Exodus 22 verses 1. Excuse me. That is Ezekiel 22 verses 1 to 3. It's also in Ezekiel chapter 20. Some shall depart from the faith, listen, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Doctrines of devils. You know in Galatians chapter 5, right alongside adultery and fornication and drunkenness and covetousness, it also says heresy is a, is a work of the flesh, a lust of the flesh. And then at the end of all of Paul's lists of sins, there's a little phrase that so many of y'all overlook, and it says, they that do such things... As a lifestyle practice, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's Galatians chapter 5. Read it and weep. Read it for yourself. Look it up. Google it, Galatians chapter 5. If you're living as a drunk, if you're living in adultery or fornication, if you're living in covetousness, if you're living in heresy, doctrines of demons, witchcraft, variance, strife, sedition, sorcery. You shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care how much money you give to Kenneth Copeland. I don't care how much money you give to T.T. Jakes or Creflo Almighty Dollar. I don't care how much money you give to TV and Matt Crouch. I don't care how much money you give to Jimmy Swaggart if you're living in sin. As a constant lifestyle practice, you are not saved. You can't buy God. You can't buy the blessings of God. You can't buy healing. You can't buy deliverance. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. And you can't buy heaven. Somebody tried to do it in the book of Acts. He saw Paul doing miracles. Oh, I can buy it. You know what happened? Ah, bad things, man. Bad things, man. Bad things, man. God has nothing for sale. Neither should O.S. Hawkins and Jackie and Graham. God never called anybody to sell a book, to sell a book, to sell products. If you do, 2 Peter chapter 2 says, you are in covetousness and you are a merchandiser of the gospel. God deliver us from the love of money. God deliver us from filthy lucre. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said, silver and gold have I none. That's not a bad confession. It's true. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, but such as I have, but such as I have, give I you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise and walk. He continues in verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They have no conscience today. Forbidding to marry. Oh, just live together. Just shack up, you pay less taxes. Just live in fornication and adultery. <laughs> Forbidden them, you don't have to marry. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? This is what Paul said would happen, and it is happening in our day. We can't even define marriage. We can't even define the institution of marriage. The Bible predicted the Bible said in the last days they will be eating, look at America's waistlines, fat, gluttonous, obese pigs. Eating, drinking. You don't need. Look, it's not this buds for you, friend. It ought to be this bloods for you. Drinking, drinking, drinking like a fish. Binge drinking. You better quit binging on alcohol and start binging on the Bible. Binging on the blood and binging on the broken body of Jesus Christ. Eating and drinking. Marrying and giving in marriage. We even let the gays get married. We, we can't even define marriage. That's what the Bible says. 
What I just read from Paul calls out social media. The World Wide Web is the winds of hell. Paul, as I just read, warned of doctrines of demons, didn't he? Jesus, as I told you earlier, warned of this in the Olivet Discourse. Yes, he did. Every TV preacher for money speaks, as my original text indicated, quote, as a dragon. All of your videos and visual tech for money is demonic. Today, electronic speech has replaced speaking in tongues. At the Azusa Street Revival in the first decade of the 1900s, the 20th century, God reintroduced the gifts of the Spirit and speaking and praying in tongues to the church. And as I was praying about this message yesterday, the Lord said that's the last good thing that came out of California. The Californication state. California. Porn. Who gave us Silicon Valley. Who gave us porn. Who gave us the vile internet. And the wicked, evil Facebook. Apple. Google. Amazon. That's Washington, just as bad. Microsoft, Washington, just as bad. The whole West Coast. Evil. Evil! And wicked. The electronic babble today is bringing back Genesis 11 and the Tower of Babel and God's opinion of your electronic babble today is the same as his view of the Tower of Babel so long ago. That's why I pray in tongues. That's why I speak in tongues. And if it's a message for you, I'll interpret it. If it's praying to God, I'm not going to interpret it because it's private between me and God. But God return us to Azusa Street. God return the assemblies of God to assembling for God again. God return the church of God to be the church of God again. God return Pentecostal holiness to holiness again. Our electronic babble has brought us back to Babylon. And that's why Revelation 18 calls the false prophet the great whore of Babylon. Babylon, Babylon the great. But in one hour, I said in one hour, four places it says in Revelation 18, in one hour so great riches shall be made not. We had a taste of that in 2020. We had a financial collapse. I was the only preacher who said America was going to have a financial collapse. All the other ones said it's going to be fine. I said it right. Well look, that was just the beginning. That was just the tip of the iceberg. That was just a taste. A total collapse is coming. A total collapse is coming. Six more plagues. Six more plagues are coming. Another the Great Depression is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Quit your partying and quit your playing and start praying if you value your soul. One hour. In one hour. Four verses in Revelation 18. Google it. Look it up. In one hour so great riches will be made not. The whole world will gather off America's shores and cry for us and say, this nation that made the whole world rich, so great riches in one hour, is made not. Are you listening, Joe Biden? Are you listening, Kamala Harris? Are you listening, AOC? Are you listening, Senator Sanders, Senator Harris? Are you listening, Mr. Obama? Are you listening, Mr. Clinton and Miss Clinton? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to the thundering voice of the prophet of Almighty God calling America to repentance? We are networked, we are unified with, we are linked into, and we are connected to the world, but not to Christ's cross. And as you look at social media, boasting and bragging and bullying and bellicose claims dominate it, but it's also full of meanness. And look, meanness is never of God. Today's Christian leaders, and I call out men that I used to love, that I used to know, that I used to fellowship with, that have gone into the apostasy, that once were great men of God. Men like Jimmy Swaggart, Donnie Swaggart, 
Gabriel swaggered. Today they've given up the humility and the patience of serving God and they have become supremely, luciferically arrogant. They are rude. I could name others. For now, I'm going to hold off. I'm praying for these people. If they'll come back to God. But as I listen to these people, they've been taken over by politics, by psychology, by purpose, and, they, and they've left the preaching of the gospel. I listen to many of them. I emailed with someone the other day, one of the greatest missionaries in the world. He said, Donald Trump is saved. He's a, he's a baby Christian. He's born again. Now, respectfully, frankly, I disagree strongly. I hear many preachers like Paula White who, who Twitter blocked me. Oh, Donald Trump has been saved. Donald Trump has been uh, born again. Jackie and Graham, O.S. Hawkins, people that, that hang out with him. Dr. Jeffers, oh, he's been saved. He's been born again. Jerry Falwell Jr., Mr. Unzip My Pants on the Boat. Oh, Trump is saved. Franklin Graham hangs around with Trump the way his dad, the way his dad, Billy Graham, hung around with Richard Nixon. But they're two peas in a pod. Look, oh, I respect President Trump. I voted for him twice. I'm a conservative. I voted for him on the issues. But anybody who says that Donald Trump is saved is a false prophet, a liar, a deceiver, and frankly, a scumbag. He ain't no more saved than this pulpit. He ain't no more saved than this coffee table. He ain't no more saved than that umbrella out there because he lives for the devil and he lives in sin. And that's not salvation. I like his politics. Not, not, I, I like the issues. But he's tricky Dick Nixon all over again who deceived Billy Graham. And Trump is deceiving Franklin Graham and all the others just like Richard Nixon deceived Billy Graham. Look, I'm old enough to remember Ronald Reagan. But look, it's either Hollywood or Holiness. It's, you can't have Hollywood and holiness. You can't have actors and authors. That's where TBN blew it. That's where TBN blew it and went shipwrecked according to the faith. Look, movie stars and TV stars like Ronald Reagan, look, are not saved. You can't live your life in idols, images, icons, and likenesses and be an icon and be a likeness and be an idol and be saved. You have to come out from that and be separate from that and be the ecclesia and come to the church and renounce Hollywood and be saved. Look, I'm not a politician. I'm a prophet. So I'm going to speak out. Let the chips fall where they may. I really don't care if I upset you. I don't care if I offend you. I'm not seeker sensitive. I'm savior sensitive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Donald Trump's sin will damn him to hell if he doesn't repent. Did you hear what I just said? So will yours. Are you listening to me? The trump of God's coming. I'm not talking about Donald Trump. The trump of God is coming. At the last trump, at the last trump, the trump of God is sounding. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do Joel chapter 2. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sound an alarm. And I'm going to set the trumpet to my mouth. And I'm going to declare to America her sins. Joel Osteen won't tell you that. Joel Osteen won't preach the book of Joel. But I do and I will. Hear the word of the Lord. I speak as a prophet of God. Number one, billionaires are not saved. And you can include millionaires. No exceptions, no exclusions, no excuses. Number two, bullies are not saved. Read your Bible. Number three, blasphemers are not saved. Read your Bible. Number four, Builders of gambling empires 
are not saved. Listen, FanDuel. Listen, DraftKings. You better forget about a sports book and you better make sure your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and don't gamble away your everlasting eternity. Don't make a bet. Find the blood. Find the Bible and find the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, boasters are not saved. All boasters and braggers are going to roast and they're going to be toast in hell forever. That's number six. Braggers are not saved. Number seven, blowhards. It's always about me. What I have. Look how much money I have. Look how big my you-know-what is. Look how tall I am. Look what I drive. Look what I give. Look what I do. Look at me. Look at me. If you talk like that, you're Satan. You're Lucifer. Antichrist. Beast. False prophet. Bloggers and podcasters about self are not saved. Why? In all of these points, their pride, arrogance, ego, ambition, drive, and love of money, filthy lucre, send them to an everlasting hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have more material today. I have more than I, more than I want to cover, but I feel... <coughs> And I sense right now the Spirit of God telling me that it's time. It's time to give an altar call. It's time to get saved. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, unless you're driving a car. Hit your knees. Hit your knees right now. Fall on your face before Almighty God. Lay prostrate before God and find the altar. In the name of Jesus, I command you to repent. The book of Acts says God commands all men everywhere to repent. And I'm his spokesman. I'm his ambassador. I'm his son. And I'm commanding you right now to repent. If you don't, the penalty is God will burn you in everlasting hell forever in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Pray this prayer right now. Repeat it and mean it with all your heart. God, I'm a sinner. God, I have broken your moral law. And God, I deserve to go to hell. I repent of my sin. I'm sorry. I confess my sin. And I want you to name your sin. Tell God I've done this. I've done that. I call out your sins. Tell him, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And then I want you to forgive everybody that you're holding something against and release them and reconcile. And I want you to keep praying. I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe you were buried. I believe you were resurrected from the dead. So right now, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Right now, Lord Jesus Christ, I make you the Lord of my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, heal me, deliver me, set me free, fill me with the Holy Ghost, lead me and guide me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. There is rejoicing in heaven. Hallelujah. The Bible says, over one sinner that repents. If I can pray with you, counsel with you further, offer you any spiritual assistance, if there's pastors out there who want me to come minister, have a revival, be a guest speaker in your church, if you need to contact me for any reason, it's 703-405-1942. 703-405-1942. Or you can follow me and message me on any of my forums and platforms, www.youtube.com forward slash evangelist Mike Dial, www.tiktok.com forward slash at evangelist Mike Dial, Twitter at evangelist M Dial. Email C-H-A-R-M-I-K-3545 at Outlook.com. And before we go today, I feel as if the Spirit of God wants to heal the sick. He actually, He already did it on the cross. When Jesus, the Bible said, by His stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. You just have to receive it. Are you ready to receive it? Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things ever you desire. You desire healing. Do you desire deliverance? Do you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you, do you desire to walk a, a sanctified life? What things ever you desire.
When you pray, believe that you receive it. And the believing becomes, the believing comes before the receiving. Believe that you receive it and you'll have it. Right now, I stretch out my hand to you. Right now, I lay hands on you in Jesus' name spiritually. Hallelujah. And I pray that you be healed. Be healed. I say to you, be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Say it right now. Say, Lord, I receive my healing. I believe and I receive my healing. Hallelujah. And there it is. Bro, there's the river of God. Oh, there's the river of God. He could flow, river of God. I curse all manner of sickness and disease. I command every demon, devil, evil spirit, and fallen angel to come out of God's people. And I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now. I curse cancer. I curse COVID disease, COVID-19. I rebuke heart disease. Hypertension tension, sugar, diabetes, and all manner of sickness and disease. I claim and believe in the prayer of faith and I stand for the healing of every single one listening to this message right now all over the world. And I ask it, in the in the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of God. Give us another Pentecost right now. Give us another Azusa Street. Oh God, pour forth thy spirit. Pour forth thy spirit and send the rain. And send the rain. And send the rain. And send the river of God. And send the rain. I say to you right now, you've been born again. So now in Jesus' name, receive ye. The Holy Ghost. Don't talk in English anymore. Don't talk in English anymore. God has given you spiritual words. God has given you spiritual words. In Acts chapter 2, they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. He's given you utterance right now. Yield that tongue. Turn it loose and let it go. Paul said, I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than you all. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. He Romans chapter Chapter 8, verse 26, the Spirit of God makes groanings, groanings, and in speech which is in heaven, you can't understand it, but it's speaking the will of God, the will of God, it is speaking the kingdom of God, and the will of God into being in the earth. It's the river of God, Jesus said, out of your innermost being, John 7, 27, I think it is. Out of your mouth being shall flow rivers, 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 kitora basata, rivers, kitala bushoto, rivers of kuriandala basata of living water. It'll bring life where there's been only death. It'll bring healing where there's been only sickness. It'll bring freedom where there's been only bondage. In the name of Jesus. Keep on praying. Keep on praying until I talk to you next time. This is Evangelist Mike Dow reminding you that Jesus is still your answer. God bless.